What a lovely cottage this is. Maybe now I can sit here quietly and try to write the remaining three quarters of my book. You know what? First things first, I gotta post this on my socials. There we go. Wait, what's all that rumbling? Eh, I can work with this. Hey yo, I even got a title card! The story will continue after this. The cottagecore movement is a subculture that has been growing in popularity, for no particular reason, since the beginning of the decade. At first glance, the movement itself seems to me more aesthetical, with participants actively dressing themselves and their homes like my grandma's living room, learning trades that machines long ago replaced, and baking bread. But we'll have to go back further than the core from the mid-20th century to learn more about this subculture. All the way back to the 3rd century. B.C. Agrarianism, or as I'll probably be calling it throughout this segment, agrarian idealism, is a social philosophy that sees rural society as superior to the dirty and crowded urban society that exists nearby. Other beliefs included that cooperation of the rural community, neighbors helping each other and the like, is a model society, and that the independence and self-sufficiency that comes with it grounds oneself in reality and reassures them that their place in life is a good one. Agrarianism is a philosophy that has survived for a long time for a reason. It makes sense. You tell people that they can be their own boss and decide their own fate with 40 acres and a mule west of the Mississippi, and with most cultures, they'll be racing each other to fulfill this desire. It's what happened in the US, parts of Australia, and other Commonwealth nations in the 19th century. But it did fall out of fashion at the great increase in urbanization that came in the 20th century. And you may think agrarian ideals have become long gone. Well, you'd be wrong. Agrarianism is still around in two forms, be it embraced by socialist parties with the creatively named Agrarian Socialism, or by many farmers and peasants parties under its original name. But before we dive too far into this, I should mention that Agrarian Idealism is largely based on the concept of Acadia. Wait, no. I read that wrong. It's largely based on the idea of Arcadia. Arcadia is a utopian ideal that originated in ancient Greece. More specifically, it's named after the Arcadia province in that nation. With the growth of cities like Athens and Alexandria after the death of Alexander the Great, the Polemokapilos in Civ 5 he was, more people began looking towards provinces like Arcadia in a nostalgic fashion. Poets like Theocritus and Virgil were out of shepherds and farmers who lived a pure life. Renaissance theologians and artists were inspired by the Greco idea of pastoral beauty and ease as well, and Shakespeare in the 1600s worked pastoral ideas into his plays. All up through the 18th century, the idea of Arcadia was seen in written and painted works, captivating the urban mind into wanting to experience a sanitized version of peasant squalor. It's seen good usage in popular culture, most notably for my demographic in the 2007 video game Bioshock, as well as being featured in multiple novels and in two science fiction shows. Fun fact, the Arcadia region of North America is named after the same region in Greece, so if you want to go see a Stephen King themed utopia, you gotta go to Maine. Marie Antoinette and all of pre-revolutionary France fell deeply in love with agrarian idealism. A bit ironic, considering they didn't care much for anyone who was a peasant farmer. Across the water in the US, future President Thomas Jefferson fell in love with a different form of Arcadia. Agrarianism befell this democratic leader for its opposition to aristocracy and love of honest farmers. Socialism also loved agrarianism, with Emiliano Zapata and Mao Zedong seeing it as a way for the proletariat to reclaim power over the exploitive, urban bourgeoisie. Or in Mao's case, the fact that peasants were key to a revolution and the country should be collectivized to benefit the state. But that's straying too far from cottagecore, unless you're in this half of the compass. I'd like to get back to the cottagecore we know so well. There we go. I feel a lot better now. Now, our cottagecore, not in the ownership way, but the generational way, started with the flower children of the 60s known as hippies. Communes popped up in rural areas, based on both the Jeffersonian and Zapatistan ideas that in turn were inspired by Arcadia. They desired to create utopias that were self-sufficient and had the whole community working as one to build a paradise on Earth. It's safe to say that they failed, as many of the communes fell out of style by the 80s. But there was something they did get right, and no, it wasn't free love. That's right, it's aesthetics. From flower prints to precious pastels, we can see that cottagecore looks more towards an idealized version of the American and European farmer. Their feeling towards these aesthetics is an understandable one. For decades, a sizable part of the American population lived and worked rurally. But for those who've lived their entire lives in cities, they seem to mention the comforting feel we have for familiar, yet mysterious things. Why do I keep doing this to myself? So, something I almost forgot to mention was Transcendentalism. It's a philosophy from the 1800s, used by the Transcendental Club of Massachusetts and its members, including Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
The transcendentalists believed in getting back to nature, and focusing more on the individual. And while the movement only did last a few decades, it left a lasting impression on Western culture through the self-reliance we see in modern subcultures, like Makers and Cottagecore. One can also see that the cottage core we see today is based off of one more ideal from the romantic era of humanity, escapism. Escapist ideas are nothing new. From the times of King Ludwig II of Bayonne and his fairy tale ideals, to nowadays when everyone has been locked up with their own minds for well too long. We can all see the madness that comes from wanting to leave this plane. Which is why escapism exists, and is popular among all generations. With many sinking countless hours into things like video games, shows, books, hobbies, or even streamers to hide their eyes from the world burning and flooding simultaneously around them. A commendable reason for such pastimes that I disagree with. I mean, it's not like I ever did any of that. The cottage core we know today comes from Tumblr and Pinterest, where people shared images of their ideal rural life, free from other people and their Jones, in 2020. And it all makes sense. The minute you lock people up and throw away the key, they desire to be back outside. For a pretty similar reason, there was a spike of trips to national, state, and even local parks a bit of a ways into the 2020 leg of the Great Mask Up. Video game sales increased, people bought all the yeast and toilet paper at the grocery store I worked at, and once more, the world learned to romanticize farming. Now, while a lesbian couple fawning over a nice cottage in the Midlands, or some Tumblr youth talking about bread more than your average German sounds interesting, you may be wanting to know, why they do that? Firstly is self-sufficiency. The cottage core subculture seeks to help those who want to become self-sustaining. And while it may not be to such an extreme as living off the grid and making their own clothes like the pioneers of old did, it's more trying to subvert the system while also making your life better off. Instead of buying bread or produce from the shelves of a supermarket, they make it the old-fashioned way. It helps build skills and make an individual less dependent on the encroaching megacorps, even if just for a few things. And you know what? This has earned however much respect from me the cottage core community wants. Wait, hey, what are you doing here? Again after agrarianism? Well, it does seem to be inescapable. We could be three decades into the post-apocalypse, and some groupon will continue to go on about the majesty of farming green fields while hiding in an underground bunker. Anyway, agrarian ideals will persist within humanity even when we replace everything with robots. Tracking back into escapism, you can see it's a reasonable response to some of the more traumatic experiences of the world. Lose your job? Your grandma? Mental health? Just get on Pinterest and look at these pictures of strawberries Greg out in Utah grew with his husband. Or the countless breads people made with the yeast they got from my former employer. Maybe even that beautiful Kincaid-esque painting that was hanging up in the art gallery near the Richard Nixon Museum. Your options are endless, and many would choose to find something that they see as comforting to get them through these hard times. Now, many can argue that living in a Kincaid painting isn't all it's cut up to be. Farms are nothing to be romanticized, especially if this PSA is to be believed. I grew up in rural Iowa, and while I was lucky enough not to do any farm work, I can sympathize with the kids who were in FFA and 4-H at my school. There's a lot of work making sure that the animals are not dying, the crops are growing right, and that all the machines on your farm work without falling apart on you two minutes into tilling the field. Not to mention that nowadays, even with all our technological advancements, there's more stress on farmers from mega corporations like Monsanto, who have sold stronger weed killers to farmers, only for these chemicals to kill their plants and have the same company sell the same farmers the seeds they specifically engineered to be resilient to everything, plus that one chemical. What's even worse is my talk about stress isn't over. Everything from the wetter to the price of a bushel or a whole head of meat will sell for, even the bastards that are locusts, rats, or wild animals that think they don't have to pay for your hard work. Not to mention the fact that it's been one of the few jobs in the world where you have to live in your workplace. I can kind of see why it's been uh, considered one of the most stressful jobs in the US, Australia, and Canada now. You know what? Aside from the stubborn old ones who can't take a compliment, if you or a loved one know or are farmers, thank them. They have to put up with all this, plus anything in the comment section lets me know I forgot. All for the same yearly wage as a lot of office workers. Alright, small tirade about the plight of the farmer aside. There's also the problem that because of the polished image, many people try to give cottagecore. A lot of those new to the subculture think that it's just a cakewalk, and not an attempt at living much like the pioneers of the olden days. So if you were to say, drop off a hundred young Zoomers at a cottage in Northumbria and lead them with some raccoon who just wanted to write sci-fi novels, they'd be a disaster. Well, now I gotta clean all this up. I swear, these people don't respect nature. Oh hey, you're still here. That was cottagecore, or rather, the cottagecore people like to see. But as you can see here, people only care about it if it makes them comfy. The minute I asked if any of them wanted to help me garden, only two of them said they would. The rest treated us like a music festival, since I only had one wood-burning stove and no bread starters. I think a small contingent of them declared themselves hermit crafters and even walked off into the woods to find mushrooms and berries. Nah, they should be fine. Anyway, you should get going. I think the bus that brought them all here is somewhere around here. I'll still be here, cleaning up, alone. But, I wanted solitude. I appreciate the thought, though. You know what? Here's this for you since you're such a kind person. 
My friend Tim, he drives a truck. Dating online, he's had no luck. Needs a country girl who understands. Jenny is tired of being alone. Works in her garden, stays at home. Just wants someone to hold her hand. You don't have to be lonely at FarmersOnly.com City folks just don't get it.